isn't linked together, so she would know if you're getting it, you know, downloading apps and stuff like that. That used to be a long time ago, but when we got different uh, different phones, or uh, when our phone, like our phone contact list would be synced up in the cloud and stuff like that, I just I couldn't have, like, she had, like, tons and tons and tons of, like, phone contacts. I just couldn't have all that, but it's still kind of linked up at one point. But as far as, like, she asked me to get my, my own iCloud account, just to kind of free that up a little bit. How about your Facebook account? You deleted that at some point? When did you do that? And why? I think it was... So we got back August 7th. Went to work. I think it was probably August 8th. That's when um, Nikki was, told me she told her friends about me. And I just figured, you know, they probably looked me up on Facebook and see that she was pregnant. If, if Nikki already found it, knew it probably already by the reason why I did that. Did you and Nikki ever fight? We never fought, but like I said, I had to, like, calm her down a bunch of times. Yeah, you you started to mention that uh, when we were talking to you before about her getting upset about some video or something about being bipolar or... Well, she, what are you talking about? My, I think either my, my dad told me about that or John Walsh told me about it. Like, she, she made a couple of videos, like, when she was just, like, you know, talking to herself, saying that she was bipolar or something like that. But a lot of things was, like... When she realized that, okay, like, she's the other person in the relationship that, you know, I'd always put my wife first over her, and that's what kind of made her take a step, take a step back a few times, and then, like, I had to kind of, like, calm her down. Tell me about those times. What'd that look like? So the first one was probably around July 4th when I had to leave her house, because she, she wanted to kind of spend most of the day together before she went to, like, a baseball game or something. And, like, when I had to leave, it kind of just... So I just made her like kind of take a step back and wonder what she was doing and I just you know told her like hey you know just because of what's going like just because I had to leave doesn't mean like you know you have to just take a step I was I was like comforting her at some point I don't even know why I was doing it maybe I, I knew I was too far gone that, at that point but it was because this is Shannon's piss she's called you ten times you were sleeping yeah. you had your day off yeah. and then you go outside to talk to her on the phone and then tell her um, Nikki, that you need to go home just in case she calls back and yeah. all that, right? Mm -hmm. So how, what did she say to you, Nikki? She was in the shower. She said, okay. And then that's, like, when I, when I talked about it, I, I, I calm her down. It's she's on the phone. So. And was she like, we're breaking up, like, we're not going to, I no, can't no, do this? She, no, or? she said, like, she didn't want to, like, she didn't think it was safe or it was good for us to see each other anymore that day, like, the rest of that day, just because of all that. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. And she asked me to come over, like, later on after she got back from her baseball game. And so you did that? Mm hmm So what was the second one like? It was basically about the same thing. She was, you know, I didn't really know it at one point, but I guess she had uh, set up a couple dates with, like, some eHarmony app or something, and they never showed up. And uh, she would already made plans with me, and, you know... Wait, she, what do you mean? She set up dates when she had plans with you? Yeah. Why would she do that? I guess she kind of figured out they weren't going to show up. She went, I guess one, one, I guess when she went to the baseball game, they never showed up, and there was another one, and never showed up either. So, so she's actively dating other people while I never, you I didn't know it until, like, a couple weeks later. Mm -hmm. How'd you find out? She told me. What'd she say? She, um, it was some, it was one conversation where I actually kind of fell asleep on the couch, and then, like, she had told me, like, I'm not much, much sure why she even told me about it, but it was... It was very random, and she could tell that it kind of like took me back a little bit because I figured she would have told me that if she was actively still like looking around. I mean, she didn't have to tell me, but I figured. She Do you think she told you though, so that it would hurry you up and make a decision? You're making a decision. It, it might have been, but you know, it's she never had anybody that actually tried to like fix things as far as like you know, hey, like. I like where we're, where we're at as far as like the relationship goes and actually like I did stuff for her around the house, around her little apartment and like nobody's ever done that and she just thought it was different. So. What about our male friend? Where does he stand with her? What's his name? Jim. Jim. Thank you. Um, he worked in the oil field uh, North Dakota I believe and I, mean, I guess he's been a friend of hers for a long time. 
and it's kind of like a shoulder to cry on. It's always somebody that's always been around for her. And I guess he had like he's had a couple girlfriends, and just I guess he's not hadn't had much luck. I guess in that department, as far as like even girlfriends and just him and Nikki have always been good friends. Just platonic friends. That's as far as you know. As much as I knew. Yeah. But I think uh, they just they just been friends for a long time, especially up in oil, oil field, North Dakota, mm-hmm. or whatever he's working on, I think. Either Wyoming, you know, they can go all over the place. When um, Sandy and Frank lived in the house for 15 months, mm-hmm. what was that like? It was, you know, it was tough. Do you want me to wait? Or? No. Okay. okay. Um, it was tough, you know, because, I mean, go from just me and Shanann and Bella and CC to, you know, two other people and then now four dogs. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, Onyx is a, he's a terror. 100 pounds of just heat-seeking missile everywhere. And, like, it was, I mean, it was cool having more people around, but, like, it, it was stressful. Yeah. Like, I mean, because with Shanann, like, having two dominant personalities in the house and with her mom there, it was kind of like, what her mom would tell her kind of how to raise the kids sometimes or like, you know, do this, do that, you know, like whenever they were sick, she was like, all right, you know, rub peroxide on their feet, they'll be fine. Just like, what? Like, okay. And uh, like, I wouldn't do it. And, you know, saying was like, just, just do that. It's okay. But like, it's just like little things like that. And it, yeah. just, it was like a clash every day. Yeah. It's kind of like every time I got home, I didn't know if she now was pissed or if she was okay. Because... When we first got it, when they first got there, they didn't have they didn't have a job yet, and so they're just around all the time. But then, like once they got jobs and stuff, like I think it was a little better for Shanann because you know they weren't around the house all day. But you know, it was definitely stressful, just you know, just vacuuming like every other day. Yeah. And just like I mean, cooking was great. That was awesome. There. <laughs> but you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, I was always like you know. Because they lived, they were down in the basement, so I was, I was always really trying to keep the girls upstairs while they were sleeping, because you know they're running around downstairs, and mm-hmm. like, I didn't want them to wake up. And I know Frank always told me that trying to wake up Sandy early is not good, so it was just, you know, just kind of like walking on eggshells a lot. Yeah, it was stressful. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that stressed your marriage with the time, or? I mean, it's it was 16 months. It was 15, 16 months. months. Yeah, it was. It was a long time. I mean, it was it was great around the holiday times because they were already there and like you know all that was great. And sure. Yeah, it, it definitely. You know, we never had really had much alone time. Yeah. Because you always had to kind of plan it out. So. Yeah. What was her purpose for living out there? They just wanted to be closer to the kids. Okay. Yeah. Because they're you know we FaceTime a lot, but you know it's not the same of like. You know, all right. But two kids, it's hard to fly back and forth. I mean. When they went back to North Carolina this past time, it was the first time CeCe's been there. She was three. Yeah. First time her brother ever met her. So were they trying to were they trying to move to Colorado permanently, or they just they were thinking about it at that point in time? Okay. But it, you know, Frank was there. He didn't want to leave. Sandy wanted. To leave. She wanted to go back. Yeah. 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 It was just a matter of like they knew their house wasn't being taken care of. And they just. They wanted to go back and make because they had, they had put their house up for sale for a little while, but never, never bought. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about your financial stresses? Yeah, the bankruptcy was something I never thought was going to happen. I think that was back in like 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. But I never thought that was going to happen. And I, I never thought a lot of it was from the wedding because they just put it all on credit cards. Mm-hmm. And so it was just, and then the doctor bills from like you know endoscopies and just like girls were seem like they're sick like every every month it seemed like some type of ear infection which to figure out was just like you know put the tubes in their ears and stuff there was like you no know, different operations here a couple overnight stays in the hospital for breathing and stuff like that and so it was just it all mounted up I mean I, I never thought it was that far gone but. Yeah. Was any of that from Shannon's neck surgery, or were those bills pretty well paid up? Well, I think the bankruptcy never t- 
touch the medical part of it because it's you have to be like like by the like the medical part of it, medical bankruptcy, and then there's like regular bankruptcy. Oh, okay. Healthy bankruptcy ever touches is like student loans or medical stuff. You have to like be specific with that. Okay. But I think it just took away like a lot of the furniture that we had bought and then a couple other things inside the house. It's kind of alleviate a lot of the, I, I didn't, I mean it took, I mean every, we had to make the house payment up my phone every month and I had to listen to the bankruptcy spiel like every time and it's just like, I didn't know how long it was going to take. But apparently it was, I mean, once you're in bankruptcy you just pretty much you never get out of it. Yeah. It seemed, it felt like. You guys, weren't you guys behind on your mortgage even yeah, when I like talked to you? Yeah, like earlier in, it's like, I think December 2017 and then January, February, March. 2018. That's when I took the 40, we took the 401k out, the loan out to pay for that. How was it that you were spending so much money for it? Just, you know, kids and just other bills that we had. And just, I mean, I knew the car was getting paid for it by the, by the bill. But, you know, I never really asked to see, like, I mean, I didn't even have access to the bank account in my home. Oh. So like I, I never really asked to see what it would have looked like, like how far. But I just know she called, called me and told me, "Hey, can you pay the mortgage today?" I'm like, yeah, cool. And that was, <laughs> that's, you know, from the from my little four wheeler incident where I sold it without actually paying it off yet, and she thought like, "No, you're never touching the accounts ever, <laughs> ever." So I'm like, "Okay, that's cool with me." But yeah, it's. I never saw the account or what was in there. I just like, hey, there's my, like when I worked at Longmont Ford, I got my check, I just brought it there. Yeah. So. There was a hair care company, I think it's called Monat. Does that ring a bell? You know anything about that? Mm -hmm. Like maybe hair, maybe hair dye. I don't know. It's like a, um, do you know if she did like an auto order through that company and had stuff delivered for hair, any kind of hair care product or hair care dye? That's something to, I mean, she had like little, I mean, there was something she, like a little gift pack she had delivered every one, like once every month or I mean, once every two months. Had like a different array of different products in it. Don't remember where it's from? Okay. No. Was it like said Monet? Monat? M O N M O N A T. Mm -hmm. No. Alright, well. Okay. There was, a, there was an order that was made. Like 251, that's why I asked if it was like an auto order type thing. It might have been an auto order. Yeah, it yeah, right. might have been something that I know that Nicole Atkinson, she's in all that stuff. Maybe maybe she didn't got her, maybe she didn't got her something, or maybe it was something she recommended. Okay. How about the HOA thing? What happened there? She was mailing to the wrong address. Uh, they changed her address, and she mailed to the wrong address for a year, and then they. We got a letter in the mail where we didn't like sued over it. We had married choice for a year. So we had to pay double for either a whole year or a couple months. That, that sucked. What happened to all the money that she sent to the wrong address? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They said they wouldn't credit it or anything. I'm not, I'm not even sure what that address was. said it was just something that she didn't see. I was like, well, I'm not gonna, I wasn't gonna harp her about it because she had, I mean, she did, she did so much, so I was like, I'm not gonna, like, say, what the heck are you doing? No, I'm just like, sure. don't need that to blow up. I know she felt bad enough. So, Chris, what do you think we could have done better? What, what could have made you tell us the truth that night? What did you need to hear from us that you didn't? I'm not sure what really goes to people's minds when they're in an interrogation room. During my, for when I was in there with you and Graham, I was, I mean, I was, you know, just nervous. I was, I mean, I knew I had done something wrong. And I knew you probably already knew or were going to find out. And it's just like, you know, I watched enough, you know, hate like TV shows to kind of see like, okay, what's going to happen next type thing. I never knew if that's right. 
but I think it's just the the horror of like knowing what you did and trying to tell somebody else what you did that's what kept me from doing it because I, I didn't even want to admit to myself that I had done anything so I, knew, I knew what I had done I knew how bad and horrific it was I knew how bad I was going to hurt other people I didn't I just couldn't even admit to myself that I had done it because I, like, I couldn't even tell my parents I did it until like two weeks later so were you trying to save us from the no, horror of no, it? Or it was just a think? matter of I couldn't admit to myself and how could I admit it to you? So do you think any amount of us asking you things different ways would have helped? Or do you think anything would have helped? I think if maybe you didn't ask about if Shanann hurt the kids, if you would ask the other if, you know, if something in that, a different order of question, maybe it, it would have came out a different way. Because that's the only reason I went with that story is because that was... The, well, you weren't giving us anything I know, else. I know. <laughs> that was the problem. But So if you think if we would have said, what do you think? You would have said, you know, I think you would have probably had to... If, if the video didn't show them in the truck, you probably had to have lied and just said, we, we saw the kids in the truck. I mean, I hate to say you'd have, you'd have to, you know, lie to get me to say what you wanted me to say, but it might have been that. That we saw the kids in the truck. When we were talking, there was a point where you just said, can I talk to my dad? You just want to tell him first. I just wanted to, you know, tell him that, you know, that I loved him and that it's probably the last time we're going to see him again as far as, you know, Outside of a, outside of a cell. Pretty much. Yeah. You're looking forward to it, coming. Yeah, because I'm mean, just talking on the phone. You know, it's just totally different when you see him, yeah. see a face. You know, it's like when we got on that little video conference in Love County. It was like, it was all I could do to stop, just not to like just break down on that phone. So, yeah. so it'd be, it'd be good to see them. What do you get to do when they're here? Just like this. Like in a room like this? With a if table there's a or? visiting room, visiting center, like down in my unit, and I don't know what it looks like, but I know they said it's like tables. And it's pretty much they they set up a time and get a couple hours. It's just, good. Yeah, it's just in that little center, and I'm not sure what else is in there, but I just know there's tables. I think there's like vending machines and stuff like that. But it, but it'll be good to see them. And, Unfortunately, they can't bring their phones in or anything, so I was hoping they could maybe show me a video or two, but I don't know, or a picture. But they pretty much only let you come in with your ID. That's it. Can they mail you still photos or anything like that? Yep, they yeah. can do the still photos. This is sometimes they try to play a video over the phone for me, and it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's really like fuzzy and crackle a lot, so really can't hear anything. Do you have any other questions for us? Do you ever wonder, I wonder why they did this, or I wonder why the investigation went this way? Or... I mean, I mean, I, I think the first time I, I was brought in, I think it was like the, the 14th, I believe, uh, when I met you that night. Mm -hmm. I mean, you told me there was a bunch of other people coming in for statements. Was that true? Yeah. Yeah. There was a couple people. Okay. Yeah. There were a lot. There were a lot, actually, okay. yeah. Okay. We had mean? a whole board worth of people listed and oh, okay. agents out. Okay. They didn't get the attention you got that <clears throat> night, but... <laughs> yeah, I just, I just wish none of this had ever happened, honestly. It's just like yeah. you guys could have never had to come to us and you guys never had to meet me or anything like that. None of it ever felt real, especially like when I when they put me in that that suicide watch cell, and the last thing that one of those guys said was like, "Good luck," and just slammed the door, and I just kind of knew from then on that was that was it. The deputy said that uh, one of the guys, and, uh, one of like they call them the SOG guys, special operations group in the Will County Jail. Yeah. 
it was it. Next morning, like when I got out to take a shower, I saw the newspaper and there was this big piece cut out of it. I just didn't know what that was about, and I just kind of saw like my last name around that go. And again, just... if we came back to talk to you someday, would you be inclined to talk to us again? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they just took me off guard. I had no idea. Yeah. We didn't really want to tell you we were coming just oh. because we didn't want you to have anxiety about us coming. I would have had anxiety. Yeah. yeah so we figured the blitz attack was probably <laughs> the best course today. It's like the first time we met? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, you knew when you were meeting me. <laughs> I, I just did, yeah. You just don't have all your props here today. That's right. It's our <laughs> props, man. That was <laughs> sophisticated equipment. It is. Right? That's right. <laughs> Sophisticated instrument. I don't know that that's going to happen. We might not ever see each other again. Uh, but I didn't think we would, honestly. Yeah. Your experience is definitely interesting. Um, you yourself are definitely interesting. Um, we, we see things in you that we didn't expect to, and we don't see things in you that we expected to see. Um, so it's very interesting to us, and it's. Um, I hope you can take to heart that today was a lot about us learning how to do better. How to talk to people better, how to do investigations better. I mean, like, I had never talked to a police officer before, or like FBI, CBI, anything like that. So that was all new to me. Like, like I said, everything that I've ever seen as far as you know, the authorities has been on TV. So I, did, I didn't know like what to expect. Especially when I got in that interrogation room, I just felt like exactly what it looked like. Just like, you know, you guys poke and prod and then leave. Come back in. It's like give me time to stew time to like you know think and just like it works it just really like I don't know just drills more questions into your own mind instead of like you know just staying in the room and just asking questions all the time mm -hmm. you liked it when we took breaks like you think that worked on you I did so you were like watching videos of the girls at one point do you remember that them giggling and laughing and like when I was in the interrogation room yeah you don't? I didn't. I didn't. I thought you, had, you already had my. You already had my phone at that point. No, so. we didn't take your phone towards the end. Towards the end. Okay. That was weird for me. It's, it's like when you put that picture in front of me. Yeah. And that's why it made me do it. it, was, it was, I didn't have the signal in there, but that's like the videos I had on my phone. It was just like I wish I had taken those videos out more often before all that had happened, but. Yeah. That definitely, definitely got in my head a lot. I don't know where that picture was from because I'd never seen that picture. The one we showed you? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, I never seen CC in that dress before. Really? We talked all about a lot about that dress. Yeah. That just, and you were saying making it up. I've never saw her in that dress. You were even telling us when she last wore the dress the and boots. the boots. Not that dress. Those are her favorite winter boots, and she wears oh, them the all summer. Boots. Winter boots, yeah, but that white dress was a little different. I've never oh. seen that picture. No, because you talked about buttoning it up. You said, I remember, because I just, she just wore it the other day, and I had to button up the back. And it must have been a different dress, but not that one. Huh. Was that that picture, was that in North Carolina, or was that? I don't know where the picture Pulled it came off from. Pulled Facebook. Shannon's Facebook. So maybe it was while you weren't there or something? Might have been, yeah. Cause, cause Cause you don't recall that, huh? Because there's a lot of pictures, I guess, I didn't see when they were in North Carolina that my parents have. Like, especially, like, 4th of July and stuff. And they had, like, 4th of July dresses on and stuff like that I never saw. Oh. Some I had in my phone, but, you know, that, that white dress, I never... But, like, they were, like, she was going to church or something. I just never saw that white dress. And Bella's little dress that she had. And her little, her little awkward smile there in the back. Yeah, that, that definitely got in my head when we did that. When we had the picture out there for you? See, and the, to us it didn't feel like that because we know, really didn't, didn't elicit any, any emotion. I don't, yeah. I don't show emotion that much. It's like my dad. It's like I, we don't show emotion. Like... Were you fighting it down, or were you just not a guy to show it? Like most of the time, I'm not a guy to show it. Like I, I hold it in as much as I can, and like you know, in my cell, I you know, I cry a lot, obviously, but like I'm not really a guy to show it. Okay. 
kind of light. I don't know. I just I try to hold it as much as I can. You're, I you were a difficult guy to read, and especially at the house that day. That, was, that makes total sense now. Because I, I knew it was like, just because I was like in shock or just like disbelief or just like some people said I looked like I was a heartless, no soul person, soulless person. Mm -hmm. When they did like the TV interviews or something, I'm just like, you know, I'm just glad I never saw it. I don't even want to know what I look like, what I sounded like. But you were obviously feeling it then, you just weren't. Yeah, just like no, nothing registered at all. Everything was like just harbored deep down, and then like I think it was just one night when I was in my cell, it just all hit me all at one point. Not the fact that I was in jail, but the fact that like everybody was gone, yeah. and none, none of it. I think if it was like, in, you know, like if something happens to your family, and it's like in like an accident, like a car accident, or like something like horrible like that, it registers at one point. But if like if you did it, I don't know if like it just doesn't register at one point. It's, it's like in my head, it never registered.